if we had a theme song for Lucky Dip, Ben, how would it go? Uh, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> that's the happy. That's the happy days theme song. Hang on. Uh, and if you threw a party and invited, no, hang on. That's that's a golden girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, glad. Man. I'm glad that you're only doing like. <laughs> three seconds of each of these otherwise copyright yeah. laws you know <laughs> yeah we get in trouble with youtube i don't somehow i don't think you we're in any danger of youtube being able to detect what songs i'm actually <laughs> but all i do know is that um we'll end this show with a sha la 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 <laughs> or no no, no mate, sit ubu sit <laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> All right, it's, shit. It's that or, uh, I mean, it's that or Stephen J. Cannell on his typewriter. Yeah. Shit. Diddling, diddling. Or, uh, <laughs> what was the, the Buffy one? The grr, arg. Yeah. The, best, the best show enders <sighs> of all time. All righty. Uh, hey, everybody. Glenn and Ben here from the Good Movie Monday podcast. Lucky dip time. We got, this is getting low. Look at that. We're going to have to do some more. I've run I'm, out of, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some I'm, more. I was going to say, my memory is so shit that if I look around the room, I'll just be writing down the same titles. Yeah, that's a good Clinton. point. Topping the it up. Is, okay. Yeah, far out. All right. You'll have to I'm go like... out into the uh, garage and just do titles that are uh, there. Not present. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one I pulled out was Bridge to Terabithia. Fantastic film that I remember watching in the video store, but cannot recall really anything about. It is a fantastic film, and which was a real relief because it was a fantastic book. A lot of kids our age in, in primary school would have read this in school. Um, heavy, heavy material. Um, all deals with loss, the loss of a best friend. And, and uh, yeah, and I, I just don't think Hollywood has the guts to make these kind of movies anymore where you deal with death and you teach kids how to deal with grief and things like that. And so... It's kind of feels like it was the last of a bit of an era there where you, you challenge kids and you, you gave them the respect of being able to cope with it and ask questions. Nah, but look, any, any kid worth his salt is watching movies that are completely inappropriate for them anyway. So <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know what always, I mean, though. Ones that they can watch yeah. with parents that is challenging and they can ask questions. Ask questions. No, they just watch me, Earl, and the dying girl and be like, what's happening, <laughs> mummy? <laughs> but at the same time, like, <laughs> I appreciate the gag. But like that is a, that's a <laughs> that is a teen movie, right? Aimed at teens, whereas Bridge of Terabithia is aimed at like you know sort of your seven, eight, nine, ten year olds. Yeah, which I appreciate. I love it when you when movies challenge kids. Ah, uh, Josh Hutchinson was that in that one? Is it? I don't remember the girl's name. Sophia Anna Rob or something like that. I can never remember what her name was. Anna Anna Sophia Rob. That's her. I think it's her. And she was in Witch Mountain. Oh, no, was it her? Because they were in Witch Mountain together, if that was the case. I don't know. Better, yeah, go to the Google. I don't know. Like, like I said, I can't remember anything about it. Uh, um, I remember that I've seen the girl in other things. Maybe it was a different girl in Bridge to Terabithia. Uh, let's do... It's, no? Anna, you're right. Josh Hutchison and Anna Sophia Rob. And they were, yeah. weren't they, both in Bridge to Terabithia? Or was it just her? Oh, sorry. No, um, both... I mean, I mean oh, Skate to Witch Mountain. Let's have a look at Anna Sophia Robb's filmography. And Race to Child. Witch Mountain. No. So Josh Hutchinson was not in Race to Witch Mountain. It was some other kid that um, I don't know. No, he's in the other one. The Sky. Of the Seeker? Uh, uh... Oh, he's in Hunger Games. He's in The Seeker. Uh, he's in Lone he's... Survivor. Anyway. He's in one of those. Um, he's in uh, Zathura. Josh Hutchinson, yeah, 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 totally. Um, I um, yeah, this is a shambles already, but I was mistaking Josh Hutchinson for the kid that was in Witch Mountain. Yeah, no, I know, but uh, yeah, that's the other. I was saying that's the other kids' movie that he was in. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, no, in... Josh Hutchinson, and he was in yeah, Journey like... to the Center of the Earth with The Rock, and you know. And Brendan Fraser, yeah. I should say, and yeah, RV, um, yep, RV. <laughs> Barry Sonnenfeld, dude, what happened to him? What happened to him? 
last one he did was that bloody Kevin Spacey one about the talking cat. When Kevin Spacey gets turned into a cat. <laughs> so this is Kevin Spacey's best film. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's the next one? That was a weird conversation. <clears throat> Money Movers. Money Movers, the Australian film. Yes, it's the, uh, I, I always describe it as the, the Tarantino movie before Tarantino was. It's um, <laughs> it's a great Ozploitation movie. Terrence um, Donovan, Donovan. Jason Donovan's dad. Yes, who's great in it. And Bud Tingwell. Isn't, um, is it Bud Tingwell that chops the toes off with the the bolt cutters? Yeah. yeah. And uh, was it Brian Brown? Brian Brown's in it. Now, a couple of good stories about this one. Um, so, firstly, I think I told you this on a episode of the podcast at one point in time. My best friend and next-door neighbor back when I was growing up as a kid, um, his dad was a robbery squad. And so he had... The first time I saw this film was um, when I found it in his garage because his dad kept all of his files and file work in the garage. And he had all the real actual file cases of the stuff that this was inspired by. Right? Right. And so I saw photos of clip toes and shit like that i'm like wow. and it, it was terrifying to me and might say the theatrical poster for money movies in the vhs cover was terrifying because it had that mask of like the, mask, the robber yeah. the clown sort of mask of the robber and so money movies was there as a videotape next to all these files and so i watched money movies as a way younger than i should have been and in my head thinking it's real life because it was this associated associated with all these crime scene photos and files right man Back then, if he had a gnome, we're rummaging through that shit. We would have been in a lot of trouble. But yeah, um, I bet. Yeah. I'm sure if the policeman that he'd taken that stuff home, he would have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I have no idea. No, I no. He had reason to have that stuff. Um, it wasn't a garage garage. It was more an office, like in yeah. the garage. Anyway, uh, and the other story is that so the film Money Movies is about an armed um, what do you call it? A uh, Armed robbery of a cash in transit, like a, a heist from a, like an armor guard type um, of company. Yeah, it's a money truck. Yeah, the tra- it's a uh, what's that? Wrath of Man. Yeah, cash, cash in transit, CIT they call it. So what I'm getting at is, my wife did that job for many years, right? She was a cash in transit driver, and she drove those armored trucks from picking up money and taking them everywhere. And I introduced her to money movers, and it was such an eye opener for her because one she recognized the industry back to front because they got most of the industry very, very correct in their depiction, but also the way they did things back then, as opposed to now, like with the difference in security, you know, over time left her gobsmacked as well. There's a scene where like before the heist takes effect, the truck comes back from a job with bags of money, which they don't really have bags of money anymore, but they just chuck them all into the safe. They don't. They they chuck them yeah. into the safe and they just pile up like and that that's how it's done. It's like with my wife's you know tenure at that company, it's machines that fucking process it and you know, it's yeah, canisters. Otherwise, and how shit. do you know what you've got? That's and right. How do you know who it is if you're doing a couple of jobs? Yeah, but I will tell you what, a movie of its time, it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite Brian Brown movies. It's it's great. Top notch, and the Umbrella have released a cracking Blu-ray of it. Yes, they have part of the exploitation label. Yep. Put together by Mark Hartley, not quite Hollywood's Mark Hartley. There you go. That makes sense. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Rocky Balboa. So this would be what, number seven? Number seven. Not no, as good number as six. Number, number six, maybe. It's the last one before Creed. Yes. So number six, because number one before it was number five, which was the street fighting one. The one with his son. Yeah. Sage. Yep. yep. I yeah, like right. this. This was a great comeback movie. Yeah. I like it. It's got the, the it was at, um, is what's the name in it? The Penguin? Who? No. Oh, like Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith. Yeah. No, no they use, he, he, he died. They use, but they use him in it as like a flashback and they use, I think the flashbacks are image, uh, footage that wasn't used in previous installments. So it felt new. Right. It felt new, but there's because there's who is the one? Is it is it Tony? Who's the black guy that's his other coach? Um, that runs the gym that he works at is, is Apollo Creed's co- trainer. 
and yeah, becomes. I know, I know who you mean. No, but, but, but Bert, uh, Bert Young is in it. Yeah, but the, who I don't know. So I, don't, I can't remember who tells him that you know you're too old. You ain't got speed. You ain't got stamina. What you just all so all we got to work on is pure strength. Yeah, <laughs> and he just Sylvester Stallone just shoots up the juice like nobody's business. He pumps that baby oil into his muscles or whatever it is what. they do. Those bulging things. Does he ever? And like, and there's no secret about that, right? That is clearly yeah. what's going on. Because his physique in Rocky Balboa is unlike his physique in anything he's done, including Rambo. Like, his body shape is different. He's a um, tank. He becomes he, a tank. And it's just a good movie. Like, I, I remember watching it going, fuck, this is almost as good as the first Rocky. Like, this is a well, really strong follow-up. I'm gonna tell you, it, like it, like it is enjoyable to watch, but all for Syl- Sylvester Stallone. The film's major problem is that the guy he's fighting, much like Creed, two, maybe even yep. Creed, is that the person he's fighting is a non-event. Where are the Clubber Langs? Where's the Ivan Drago? Where's Where's the Apollo Creed? Super memorable opponents that you kind of really, you know, root. For yeah. uh, for Rocky Balboa, and in Rocky Balboa, there's none of that. I couldn't tell you who the guy is. Maybe I mean, yeah, I agree with you. By the Which way, is, but... funnily enough, in the film, the whole reason they resurrect Rocky anyway is because the current world champ nobody gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I do agree with you, but maybe, maybe it's just because the 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 real fo- more than any other Rocky film, the focal point here is just Rocky, like, yeah. um, and he's it's not even a redemption story. It's a comeback story of sorts, but he's it's not of... even that. like, he's just does it like Adrian's dead. Yeah. She's died. And he's what got nothing else to he's do. He's got nothing else. He's got nothing else. Yeah. And it's got, I mean, it's quite poignant. It's got, you know, he's, his son is estranged from him. Um, It's got those sad moments in the cemetery where he's got a permanent place for his chair to sit. And yeah. like, I, I really think that Sylvester Sloan is so switched on when it comes to drama. I think he's, yeah, he knows how to put it together and he knows how to, to weave the intricacies. It's, it's, I think it's very um, easy to forget to, that Sylvester Stallone, because he's an action star and he works so hard on his body that, you know, he, the whole Rocky thing was him. It was all him. You know, yeah. like he was putting together these films and he understands story and direction and the whole movie making process. You know, there's a, you know, much more so than Arnie or any of those other guys that he kind of, these yeah. contemporaries who never really created anything themselves. They just turn up, say someone else's lines and go home. Whereas yep. Sylvester Stallone does it all. He lives and breathes it. And this is interesting because only last week I saw an interview with him. He's he's promoting his new Netflix film or whatever it is. At King the of Dolphin, the series. Yes. Paramount That's right, the, the series. So he's on a TV show um, promoting it. And it, I was shocked when they said, this is your first TV appearance. I'm like, what? He's never yeah. done one, right? And he's TV like, was and, a dirty word. And he looks very um, uncomfortable, sort of, you know, talking about it and all that. And then um, they said to him, would, would you consider doing a Rocky television series, like an event series? And his legitimate answer to that, which it, it sounds egotistical, and I think they took it that way. But having said what we just said about him and his integrity, he just says to them, who could possibly play Rocky? Like, who gets Rocky like I do? Yeah. And he's like, there's no way I could hand that over to someone else because... I, I am Rocky, you know? Well, I mean, look, you could you could get someone else to play Rocky, but it wouldn't be Rocky. No, that's right. It'd be a whole different thing. It wouldn't be and like, like, call him whatever you want, but it wouldn't be him. It's like Rambo. It's the same. Yeah. That's why but Creed even, works even, so well. Yeah, even Rambo is probably more interchangeable with someone else than, yeah. than Rocky, especially yeah. like the original First Blood, which is not really a Rambo movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's much more of a proper, you know, like a social commentary drama slash action film, yeah. Like the what it became. Well, and the other thing too is they they've got a, they've got a book to tap into, right? Yeah. Whereas you know uh, Rocky is it's straight from Sly's sort of brain, man. Yeah, you know? he'd be much better yeah, doing yeah. Off, better off doing like a Copland TV series where he's a cop policing oh, yeah. town. Yeah, and he doesn't you know, have to worry about his cop. physique. Yeah, he can let it go. He can just be him. Do you remember that was all everyone talked about when Copland came out? It's like how fat Sylvester Stallone had gotten. Fat Sylvester Stallone. He just had yet, it. Like, he would have. Had, he would have been like you know, five <laughs> kilos overweight, maybe five, ten kilos. Oh, and he Nothing. had actually he had actual padding on, like you know, to, yeah, to right. make him look plumper. 
Yeah. All right. Here's a good one that's had a TV series. Frequency. Frequency, right. I remember that was, a, that was a surprise film. And it was a movie that came out at a time when there were these weird little sort of um, sci-fi dramas that were kind of flying under the radar. They were great in and of themselves, but they, they didn't really do much as far as box office or anything like that. And Dennis Quaid still looked normal. <laughs> yeah. And what Jim Caviezel was in it. It was a, such a good storyline about yeah. a father and son that connected over time through a like a CB radio. Yeah. Um, and, and then essentially solve a murder together over time. Yeah. Solve crime in their spare time. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It was clever though. It was really clever. I never bothered with the TV show. I'm told it was basically the same. Yeah, look, I like the out. idea. I like the I mean, that is a good idea to do on a TV show. Like any of those time things where you're like, I left a secret message for you under a rock, see if it's still there. Yeah. And, you know, solving cold cases. That works really well. <laughs> uh, could have been a great series. I just, for whatever reason, I just never got into it, which is, I'm guessing, what most people did, which is why it's not a show anymore. I'm just never interested in TV shows that are spun off or adapted from movies. Like the movies are good. That's all I care about. If you go something, I different. would say, I would say, check out the Jumper TV series because there's that is be a, far superior to the film. Well, yeah, there's going to be exceptions to every rule, and God knows there have been, but um. Yeah, I, I, it's not something I immediately go. Oh, a frequency TV show! I must watch that. Yeah, it's like I've seen the movie. That's enough. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but if they do a frequency two, on the other hand, <laughs> what if they did a frequency? Uh, what if they did a frequency two TV series? It's called another frequency. <laughs> another frequency yeah. Oh, change the frequency. Yeah, <laughs> they go from FM to AM. Yes. <laughs> they upgrade, yeah. All right. The platform. I didn't don't remember putting that in there, but there we I've go. Never heard of that film. Um, it was all the talk maybe a year ago. It's that it's Korean or something. It was on Netflix maybe, and it's that film about the the prison that's on different levels. And it's got okay, so the concept is, and I'll let you discover it. The prison is divided into class structure, right? So it's like hundreds of stories high. Each level have got people imprisoned. And at the top, um, or whichever direction the platform moves at. So at the top, you've got those that are um, privileged. So they, the concept is that at dinner time, the biggest feast you've ever, you could ever imagine is put on this platform that gets lowered down to each level. So by the time it gets to the bottom, the good food's gone and you're left with feces and stuff like that because at some point in time, the yeah, the prisoners have, yeah shit on it and all that kind of stuff. And so it's about prisoners needing to try and work their way up this class structure. Um, right. It's a very fascinating movie. I thought it was a bit silly, but it's definitely revolting. I'm going to have to check this one out. That sounds great. It was, yeah, I, I am not doing it any justice because I'm trying to actually work out the plot in my head while I've got COVID, by the way, people. So it's not really coming together. If you can find the synopsis and read that out, that'd be great. But, um, uh, well, uh, uh, everyone on. was talking about it at one point in time during the lockdowns. It was one of those things, a bit like, um, a bit like Tiger King. Everyone was onto it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what it says on, on, on Wikipedia. Uh, the platform is a 2019 Spanish social science fiction horror film directed by Galda, something or another, Iritu, Iriatu. The film is set in a large tower-style vertical self-management centre. Its residents, who are switched every month between its many floors, are fed via a platform which, initially filled with food at the top, gradually descends through the tower's levels, stopping for a fixed amount of time on each. The system inevitably leads to conflict as the residents at the top level get to eat as much as they can, while with each level only getting leftovers from the previous ones. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I forgot about the fact that they do move people around um, from level to level, but it's a, it's, it's a very much a, a, a social commentary on class structures and various things, but it's worth a look. It's a bit gross. Um, Love it. Yeah. yeah. Bring them the shit eating. Let's do one more. And I think there's like, it, I think cannibalism might come into it as well. Mm. As it would. All right. Last one. Do, 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 and I can't even open it. But uh, ransom. Oh, speaking of uh, 
bodily waste coming out of uh, out of uh, <laughs> someone. So that's the whole trigger point for the film. When what? the kid, when the kid in Ransom sees uh, what's her name again, he pisses himself, and that's how that's, uh, yes, Mel Gibson knows it's him. That Gary is a fucking great recall, there, dude. Yeah, I I really like Ransom. It's a it's a Ron Howard, I think, directed it. It's one of his sort of edgier movies. Mel Gibson's incredible. Renee Russell is great. I see it reteams them from Lethal Weapon three and four, and uh, Gary Sinise Gary and. Sinise. Who's one of the other bad guys there? It's not Jared Leto, but it's someone like a Jared Leto, I think. Hmm. Anyway. Let me have a, let me use the, uh, the old internet. I love this one because it's a, it's a millionaire or billionaire's son is kidnapped and and held for ransom. And the billionaire essentially says, I'm not going to pay this ransom. It's uh, well, what a great cast. Okay. Yeah. So Gary Sinise, Delroy Lindau is the FBI agent that yep. uh, has it. Lily Taylor is it, it pops up. Leave Schreiber. That's the one I'm thinking. Yep. Donnie Wahlberg. Yep, him too. Uh, Evan and Evan Handler. <laughs> oh, and Paul <laughs> Gilfoyle. How the hell is Yeah, right, Evan Handler from Californication. If you haven't watched this movie in a while or haven't seen it at all, fucking do it. It's a really, really tense action thriller. More thriller oh. than action, but... And guess what? It's a, this is 1996, right? Dan Hedaya plays Jackie Brown. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> I fucking love Dan Hedaya. Is he still going? I yeah, no. I'm so glad he's still alive. I just, every time... I can't not think of Dan Hedaya without thinking of Alien Resurrection where he's wearing the singlet, and he's... Body hair is so fucking so thick. Hairy. No, I've his never best, seen his yeah. best role is in uh the concierge where he's like the you know, give me that give me them things. What? You know, them things on the pillow. Them <laughs> things. So oh the mints. Yeah, them things. <laughs> Wasn't he in um Dick? Is he he's Nixon? Dick in Dick. Yeah. And he's Rocking in uh, uh, the Coen Brothers' first movie as well. He's the Blood the Simple in uh, Blood Simple, and yes. he's Commando. He's the gen- gen- Generalissimo in in Commando. He's a great character actor, fantastic character actor. But um, yeah, fucking Ransom is so good. It's, it's Ron Howard is a great director. Like you know, he kind of cops a little bit of shit from time to time, but it's just because he's a popular director. Yeah, it's like. Um, Joel Schumacher, right? Like you, you make yeah. some good, you make some bad, but when you make it good, you're really fucking he's, good. He's a Tony Scott as opposed to a Ridley Scott. Yeah, yeah. You know, gets the praise, but they they miss as often as they hit. Whereas yeah. Ron Howard is gen- like down but the middle kind of. Not only that, Ron Howard can bounce between genres so well. Like yeah. he can do the missing, he can do ransom, he can do fucking gung ho. Like he can just fucking. You can do it all, mate. Can he do certainly it can. He can do Splash, for God's sake. Motherfucking Splash. And Cocoon. Yeah. Fucking Wilfred Brimley's balls. Hey, you know what? I mean, I don't I don't encourage or endorse remakes, but Cocoon, come on, that would be a good one. Yeah. Cocoon would be great. But who would you get to play the tiny Welsh character? But I mean, <laughs> they could do it with... You know, you know who they should do it with? It should be like George Clooney and Brad Pitt... And all those guys should be the old guys. Well, this is what's scary is that they are the age of half of those old guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all just so stitched up that, uh, you know. Oh, did you to... always, tell me you didn't always feel so sorry. Is it Walter? The one that didn't go. The, the one that, the, the fun Brian daddy. Denny. Is it Brian Denny? Brian Denny, he plays the alien that comes down to earth, like right. to, to, to fetch the cocoons. You got uh, Hume Cronin and, and, um, Wilford Brimley. Wilford Brimley, but... Remember him in his bathers. But, no, it was the old Why? bloke that wore the hat and the glasses. He's a bit like the old man from Up. Is it Don Amici? And... No. No. Don Amici's in it, too. Must be Jack but... Guilford. He played... Maybe. He... Does he play... Is it Wally or Walter? Uh, Hang on. I'll tell you... <laughs> no, what's not Walter... Uh, I'll bring it up on my phone here. Anyway, I always felt so sorry for this guy. He's the most, he's a funny duddy, but he's such a likable character. And 
doesn't like the idea of immortality, like living forever, because the rest of them, that's the option. They can go away yeah. with the aliens and live forever. Oh, and you also had, um, what's his name from Never Any Story? Um, Barat, Oliver Barat, or whatever his name is? Barat Oliver? Bastion. I'm looking at Bastion, yeah, right. I don't All righty. Because it's on, I'm looking at Wikipedia, which just has highlighted names with no pictures, so I can't see. <sighs> yeah, Jack Guilford. Jack Guilford. Yeah. He was such, he's such a great actor. He's very much a vaudeville comedy kind of actor, but in this one, he's just, um, yeah, just a, a broken hearted man. That's it. He didn't want to go because his wife had died. Yeah. And he didn't want to live forever without her. Yeah. You know, that shit gets me, man. That shit gets me. Yeah. <laughs> you and I talk about wanting to do a Hallmark fucking uh, podcast. That's the kind of shit that gets me. Yeah. And it's like, I was I was practically off work for the week with COVID, as you know. And the movies I could have watched while I was sick, I went for that sappy shit, dude. I went for the sappy stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. What was the one I told you I watched? I was almost famous. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, I was almost famous. Yeah, the Netflix one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of shit, man. Gets me every time. <laughs> Good sick movies. Yep. All right. Speaking of sick movies, I'm going to go because I'm fucking feeling rat shit. So. Naked. Yeah, but by the time this video drops online, I'll be feeling great, everybody. I'll be over it and everything will be good <laughs> and back to normal. <laughs> All right, Ben. Thank you, sir. Thank you.